There are rumours floating around throughout the entire season that Joe and Bottas, they kind of settled for because there were rumours that Hulkenberg was going to be brought to Hinmill mm -hmm. after his 2013 season with them, which they they like him there because in that season, he got 57 points. You know, he got a huge, over 50 points. And Esteban Gutierrez there, he only got like six. Mm. So seventh place in Japan was Gutierrez's best finish, whereas um, Hulk, Hulkenberg scored 55. That's the only time he scored points. Yeah, that 55 one time. points for Hulkenberg. Yeah, so exactly. So he, they, the, the Salba team, they would quite like him back. And Hulk's proven he still got it. And yeah. Exactly. Yeah. He still got it. But, you know, Gunther Steiner at Haas, they had the one plus one option and they took it. So obviously... Alpha Salba, they didn't get that option. Maybe for 2025, they'll try again. But then they also, Taylor Portier, what were they going to do with him? Mm -hmm. Then obviously, there were rumblings about Joe's contract with you know, concerns about sponsorship, about his performance. That then eventually, because Teo said, I was really close, but then I didn't quite make it. Yeah. So they felt like they weren't quite sure what they were going to do, but then they decided, you know what? But I'm, I'm glad they right took now. the opportunity today. There was obviously a big opportunity in Hungary when they just had pace out of nowhere. Yeah, and then no, it that went, was just really unexpected. Yeah, and it went really unfortunate. Well, it was unfortunate for both of them, really, because it was a car issue, wasn't it, with Joe's? But yeah, I, don't, I, don't, I just think that I don't want to see, you know, especially when Audi do come in, because Audi is a big manufacturer, it's a big name, and mm. eventually they, they'll, they'll take over the, the, the engine operation. Um, well, we don't know if we'll get the name, because they already own a quarter of that team. Mm -hmm. yeah. So they could stick a logo on it next year. They might not want to. They might want to just consolidate and wait until 2026. I but they might just let Salba be their own thing because it's almost like a tribute because they know in 2026 they're going to take over the they're going to take it over properly. Yeah. And I think the Salba name deserves to be around Formula One because it's been around for about 30 years now. It's, it's one of those names, Salba Minardi. Like yeah. It, I mean, it's legacy. Was it 1993 when they yeah. first came in with and JJ Leto driving? So, yeah. I mean, there, there have been like the, stalwarts of the recent And they're time. the ones that helped bring Mercedes into Formula One with their concept by Mercedes-Benz thing. So they... And Patronus. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And not to mention... And Red Bull. Giving Michael Schumacher... Brought them on Salba Engineering yeah. giving Michael Schumacher his first taste of high-end motorsport. It's a name that deserves respect and yeah. acknowledgement. It just feels they're like they've been so bad over these last years. Like since what BMW, you know, Kubica, Heidfeld, you know, 2000. Since 2000, I mean, 13, 14, when they scored no points and they finished behind Marussia yeah. was, was, that was, that was perhaps the lowest, lowest of the there. lows. And then, yeah. I mean, uh, leaving uh, Australia in 2015, they were third in the constructor standings after <laughs> NASA finished fifth and Ericsson eighth in what was, I mean, the highest, uh, the highest um, scoring like position by a Brazilian rookie. Felipe Nazar, and then I mean, then since then it's gone completely downhill, yeah. hasn't it? And even with the Alfa Romeo investment, that was supposed to surge them up a little bit, and that hasn't done so either. So it almost feels like they need a complete refresh. Mm -hmm. And I mean, drivers as well. I mean, it's like they're treading water until they until they they get that moment when Audi take over, and, and that's kind of what they're waiting for. I feel like, and maybe the opportunity to get two new drivers. I've always thought of a, a driver like a Carlos Sainz. Yes, would would go across to somewhere like Audi, and uh, mm. see, uh, I can I can envisage a Carlos Sainz and a Teo Porcher partnership. Yeah. The youth and experience, the the cool head with maybe the raw talent. And and, and I feel like Sainz might be the perfect transition driver if they sell him a dream. Absolutely. I feel like Carlos Sainz being a team leader at, at Salva to then become out. Oh, he's doing great. well at Ferrari now. Yeah, he's like, oh, no, hang on, he's hang on. He's the I've got a chance of being number one at Ferrari. Yeah. yeah which I think not many people would have given him that chance. Because everyone would have thought that, oh, Charles is the golden boy. He's going to be the number one. But now people are going, Hold on a minute. He's actually <laughs> Hang on a very second. smart. And Carlos, this is the year that Carlos has actually said, you know what? I feel like a front runner driver now. I feel like I'm one of the best. Mm. I'm not this midfield driver that just so happens to get lucky. Yeah. So he's now changed his mindset and he's now feeling more and more confident with the car. Whereas Charles has been ever since Paul Ricard last year, mm. scrambling around trying to figure out what's going on with his car, having this huge huge amount of pressure coming in from Marinello, everyone believing in him, probably not really handling it very well. But now Fred Vasseur's come in because Marinello, they want to keep Charles because they know he can be good. They saw him in 2019, decimating Vettel, who was their previous golden boy. So they know he can do it and they mm. want to believe in him. And so they just feel like, well, okay, we're going to still build the team around you, but we do have to respect that Carlos does have his moments. 
I think the Audi project will have an allure, though, won't it? I it think will, the Audi though. project, especially with the name Audi yes. coming in. His no, dad's definitely. ties to Audi as well. Yeah. And yeah. also just the fact that, obviously, yeah. we saw it when uh, Hamilton went to Mercedes, that everyone berated that move. They were like, that is stupid for yep. Lewis Hamilton to move over to Mercedes like that. I'm not saying that we're going to see Audi <laughs> become the next Mercedes and win eight constructors titles in a row. But... Your but point stands. If Audi come in and are competitive, at the moment they've got two drivers that they could replace both quite happily. And we're just talking about the fact that Ferrari have got two drivers and neither of them are going to be happy. Mm -hmm. Mercedes have got two drivers, neither of them are going to be happy. McLaren have got two drivers, neither of them are going to be happy. If you're Audi and you come in with a really good project and a really good car and you can yeah. sell one of those top drivers a seat mm -hmm. yeah. and a dream, you're looking you, amazing. you sell them a seat and a dream, but look, in two, in, yeah. Yeah. give us one year, next year, you know, if we're, if we're top of the midfield, next year we might break the glass ceiling yeah. and then suddenly... Remember how Audi dominated Le Mans back in the day? Yeah, basically yeah. they look around at all the discord and they just put their hands up going... Hey folks, yeah. want to be a team leader? <laughs> yeah. Come this way. Learn from everyone else's mistake. Yeah, so basically, yeah, Keep a one-two dynamic. Yeah, just to be an absolute sleeper unit. Because I feel like Sauber at the moment is a complete sleeper unit. Oh yeah. And Audi doing sure. this is so, so shrewd and excellent and genius. Doing a slow, gradual transition. Three seasons to slowly understand what Formula One is. Keep the Sauber engineers because they know what they're doing. Keep the Hinwheel facility but then bring in their German clout and commercial thing. But it's a turnkey deal. It's I so have smart. one slight, and I don't know whether I'm over reading into this, but you look at um, Societal has gone over there. James Key has gone over there as well, both from McLaren. As they leave McLaren, McLaren <laughs> stonks. Um, is that too much? Like, obviously, Stella's done a great job. Zach um, started orchestrating that reshuffle uh, last year. It wasn't obviously announced until the start of this year, but... That was already, that's been in the, in terms of the transition to Stella and away from Seidel and oh, away yeah, from Key as well. I do, yeah, I, I, I hope that Seidel, I mean, I was, you know what, I was all for Seidel when he first joined uh, McLaren. But actually, yeah, you look at McLaren's trajectory since them two left and there's an argument. There's another couple of things that McLaren, have, like obviously McLaren have also had their wind tunnel completed. Their That's only just been switched on. Yeah. The fabled wind tunnel, the legends. I don't know. They developed this banger of a car in Germany still in Toyota's wind yeah, tunnel. That's yeah, that's very true. They did. So. And now that they can start, 2025 will be the first season where it's fully in done yeah. the wind tunnel. Oscar they Piastri can, world champion confirmed. I would not <laughs> actually happened. bet against 2025 because <laughs> I feel like he's going to get He's, I would say he'll get multiple wins next year because if things close up and this ATR penalty... Oh, he's gone out there on a whim. No, I'm saying multiple <laughs> wins. That means just two. <laughs> two that counts. That's a so, multiple one. The thing is, though, I just feel like... I do feel a real strong sense that he can do it and that Red Bull won't romp away as much next year because other teams will catch up because we're having the same exact same red regs next year. Mm -hmm. There's no change. Yep. So all of these other teams, they've got, they're planning everything. Red Bull do still have the ATR hit and they've already stopped the RB19, but the RB20 is still the same. So I feel like that there will be some sort of catch up. Things will be closer, Please. not close. <laughs> I mean, Please. consistently Please, 10 seconds on. instead of 20, <laughs> oh. 25. But, but as in like one mistake from Max, yeah, one yeah. mistake in the pit stops and the McLarens and Mercedes could be on them yeah. and, and Ferrari. So I don't think though, like as Audi come in a little bit further, maybe James Key and Seidel are some of the first people they'll also kind of shuffle around a bit. I don't think like We've Seidel. seen it with Aston Martin. Like Aston Martin kind of came in, they brought a few people mm. and they came in, they brought a few more people mm. and then they've kind of brought in some Mercedes engineers, some Red Bull engineers and then this season it seemed to like click I don't think with Aston Martin. I think Seidel so. will be kept there because I think the whole Seidel. reason Seidel was, Seidel was critical it to takes turn, time well. turn McLaren around to get them to the trajectory yeah. now because he's he let, he felt comfortable leaving and there was no bad blood between he and Zach. He was thinking, Seidel's gone, I've done everything I can now I think now it's time for you, Andrea, to And he had his connections to Porsche yeah. from yeah, before. Exactly. And yeah, so, but now, VW. Saying, now it's my time to do this again at another team. I've done it once. I feel good. I feel like I've done everything I can. I've set everything in stone. Andrea's carry yeah. on. Perhaps it's just a comment. It just doesn't fill me with confidence. But yeah. we'll see. Look, fingers crossed. Audi at the front. I love I love Audis. They're my... I, Never really Mercedes and BMW. I was always more of an Audi kind of guy. I don't know what that says about me as a person, but there you go. <laughs> I think we'll wrap it there, lads. Um, thank you everyone for watching and listening wherever you are in the world. Um, JB, where can they find you? Not applicable F1, YouTube, Instagram, 
everywhere on the internet. Law? You can find me Law VS on YouTube and Law VSX on Twitter because somebody took my Law VS thing on Twitter. Oh, fuming. Either way, but Law VS, or if you find me in your F1 feed, I'm the guy that's on the ladder. In the attic. In the attic. <laughs> Love it. Uh, and then uh, I'm James NS19 on Twitter. And then you can find me writing articles at singleseaterspace.co.uk. Um, yeah, I write about Formula One and IndyCar on there. So you can give some stuff a read. Bosh. Good chatting, lads. Thank you for filling in for Niran this weekend as well. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next time Thank you. on the Last Lap Podcast. Bye.